Okay, hello everybody and welcome back to the Getting to Know You videos. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these. Uh, the first 14 or so that I did uh, have been getting a great response, um, but I'm getting a lot of comments to explain kind of further some concepts about uh, Git, and that's what these next couple of videos are going to do. So I'm going to do at least two more, and the first one we're going to do is today, it's going to uh, it's about fast forward merging. Um, I had a post uh, asking someone asking me to explain what fast forward merging actually is. And so to do this, uh, I'm actually going to start a new Git repository uh, and kind of explain it there. And I'm just going to be using Photoshop. Uh, in the past, I kind of used uh, movies uh, that I created in Keynote to explain it. I'm just going to be using Photoshop here. So anytime I switch to this screen, don't worry about all this stuff on the side. Don't worry about this. If you don't know what Photoshop is, don't worry. I'm just using it as a tool to diagram out what I'm explaining. So all you really have to do is concentrate on this kind of white area to explain what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, again, today we're going to be learning about fast forward merging. Okay, so let's um, bring up my terminal here and I'm actually going to start a new um, a new new repository. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with Linux or Mac, I'm, I'm going to bring up the finder here so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, all I'm doing is creating a folder basically. Um, so if I go into, uh, let's see where I am here, uh, dev, test git. Okay, so I'm just going to create a new folder here, and I'm going to call it my second piece of software. Okay, so I just created a folder there, and inside the folder I'm just going to create a, you know, a readme, just like we did before. Okay, so... Um, this is my brand new piece of software, the second one, in fact. Okay, so, um, whoops, sorry, I actually put it in the wrong place. I didn't actually put it in the directory itself. So, I'm just going to drag it into that directory. So, in my second piece of software, in this folder here, I have a readme file. Okay, so I'm just going to go into that folder. Okay, and if you see, there's the, there's the, there's the file right there. Um, for those Windows users, ls is the same as dir directory or something. Okay, so let's initialize this um, repository just like we did in the past videos and let's add this file. Okay, so we'll add it, which puts it in the staging area, and then we'll commit it. So um, initial commit. Okay, now when I created this Git repository, um, remember that we have uh, something called branches, right? Which in the past I talked about are basically contexts, okay? They're kind of like, um, you know, a theoretical environment that you're switching to, right? Um, and when you create a Git repository, when you do Git in it, the very first uh, branch it creates is the master branch. And if you type git branch, you'll see what branch you're sitting on, right? So the star beside it means I'm on it, and then master is really the only branch I'm sitting on. So when I do any commits, I'm committing on the master branch. Now what that means, again, is that you're committed, you're committing changes, you're, you're, re you're kind of recording changes inside a given context. And that's what I kind of want to explain with this diagram. So this diagram, um, the way this works is that this kind of gray bar here, this is what I call the context. This is kind of like a guide for Git um, to, this is kind of like a pathway for it to know where to commit stuff to, okay? Um, now this gray box is actually completely theoretical. It's not like Git actually stores a pathway, okay? The way it actually does that in Git is using um, pointers, okay? Uh, in other words, they're just kind of little like tags to mark where we are. So um, this little gray box with the word master underneath it, that's just a theoretical way for me to explain to you what's happening. But in Git itself, the way it actually does this is with this little master pointer, sorry, whoops, with um, this little master pointer here, okay? This is how it keeps track of what branch I'm actually sitting on. So these black boxes here that I'm going to build up, they're going to represent any time I do a commit, okay? So the initial commit I did is this first black box. So let's make some changes, okay? So um, again, if I bring up the readme.txt, okay? I'm just going to open up my text editor and I'm going to make some changes to this, um, to this, to this file here. So um, here are some added changes, okay? I'm just going to save that file. Okay, so now I've cha made changes. And again, if I do a git status, you'll see, look, readme.txt has been changed. So let's add it to the staging area and let's commit it. Change the readme file. 
Okay. Now I've committed that change. So what's actually happened here is uh, I've actually made another commit. So the way this looks in Git is I've basically added another commit. And what it does is it moves that, um, oops, sorry. It actually, it actually moves this uh, pointer up to the most recent commit. And this is how it keeps track of it. So if I were to do another change, okay, so let's say I did, um, whoops, sorry, let's open up that text editor again, and let's make some more changes, okay, save that file, and let's add it to the staging area and commit it again, made some more changes to the readme file. Obviously when you're doing this in production you would have a bit more descriptive commit comments, okay, now I've made another change. Okay, so again, what's going to happen is it's going to create another commit, okay, and move this master pointer up again, okay? So this is what happens when you are committing on the master branch. You're creating these commit objects, and these commit objects are basically records. Uh, think of them. They're records of what you've changed, okay? So that if you ever want to go back in time, you know, you basically step back through these commits and you can do that, okay? So this is what the master branch is doing, actually. Okay, so <clears throat> again, this gray pathway, because I'm on the master branch, it knows to constantly commit in this kind of pathway here. So what happens when I actually create another branch? Okay, so let's say I'm gonna create another branch. Again, I wanna do some work separate from the master branch, okay? So what I'm gonna do is if I do a git branch, you'll see there's only one branch there. I'm gonna create a new branch, okay? And then I'm going to check out into that context, all within one command. Okay, this is a shortcut to create the create the branch and move into that branch. Okay, uh, in other words, check out into that context. Okay, so the way we do that is we do a git branch, and when we pass a dash d, uh, sorry, not dash d. This is completely wrong. Ignore what I just said. Git checkout dash b. Okay, that means I'm gonna check out and create a brand new branch at the same time. Okay, I'm gonna create the branch and then move into it. Okay, like use that as context. And we're gonna call this first feature. Okay, done. So now if I type git branch, you'll see there's two branches now. There's first feature and master. And the star means I've actually checked out into the first feature. That means I'm actually working on the first feature. Okay, so what happens in the background in Git when you do this, when you create a branch, is you're creating a brand new context. So in other words, what you're doing is you're creating a kind of theoretical guide, a new pathway for new commits to go into. Okay, so um, we call this first feature, right? So let's label that. Okay, so this was our master branch, and this is going to be first feature. Okay, it's a little big, the text there, I'll just shrink it. Okay, first feature. Now again, this is just a guideline, it's a, it's a, it's a pathway for new commits to happen, okay? So what happens now is because I am sitting on the first feature branch since my last commit, which was here, right? So I have three commits here, the initial commit, changes, and more changes. Now, when I do a commit, so let's make some changes, okay, let's um, say um, make, make some changes on the first feature branch, okay? And if I actually stage those and commit those, okay, uh, added some first feature stuff to the readme file. Okay, now what's happened is that commit has happened in the first feature branch, or if you want, the first feature pathway or the first feature context, okay? So the way this looks, all right, is this is no longer going to be in the master pathway because we're sitting on the first feature branch. So this fourth commit is actually over here, okay? Now you can kind of picture the kind of connections between all these, right? So uh, the way this might look really is you might be like that, and like that, and in this case, it's gonna go over here, okay? Now, remember, I said these pathways, these guides, okay, are really just the way I can